So I um I recently set up a monster aquarium. Okay. I set up this monster aquarium behind me. The Waterbox 220. Isn't she a beaut? Yes. So I set up this monster aquarium far bigger than any aquarium I've ever owned, which means a whole new world of possibilities. So in the past, I've only had fairly small reef tanks, okay? I've had a 29 gallon biocube and a 40 gallon innovative marine up to this point. So one of the things that I am super excited about this new beauty behind me is the fish options, okay? It's definitely the fish options because up to this point, I mean, what can you stuff? in a 40 gallon aquarium in terms of fish. I mean, not much, right? So my experience with keeping fish has been super limited. And up to this point, I've pretty much just focused on corals. And because I really haven't had much experience with fish before, I am not really experienced with fish quarantines either. Props to you guys, because I had no idea how horrible the freaking fish quarantine process actually was. I finally have a good idea of what I I want to do in terms of quarantine my fish and it requires like different medications and and, and like a whole month and a half period of it it's a nightmare okay it's an actual nightmare i am so put off by the fish quarantine process even though i know it is essential to you know to go through but anyway to distract myself from this fish quarantine you know headache that I have going on right now, I figured I need to bring the excitement back. I need to, you know, remember why I am excited about keeping these fish in the first place. So in this video, I am going to go over all the fish and, you know, little critters that I plan on stocking this guy with. So in terms of picking out what fish you're going to add, there's somewhat of a hierarchy, you know, like your first fish that you need to add are like really hardy fish, you know, like damsels, clown, you know, clownfish type fish is what is suggested. And I mean, clownfish are definitely on my list. I mean, obviously everybody's got to have a pair of clownfish in their tank, right? But don't judge me for this, but I'm kind of not really feeling all the bougie clownfish options, you know, that are out there right now. I really want to go basic. I want to be a basic get some basic clownfish. I'm kind of over the whole like clownfish thing that has been going on here for a while, you know? Like I really don't really want to add clowns that are named after weather patterns. I mean, why are all the clowns named after weather patterns anyway? You know, like storms, mocha storms, you know, snowflakes, lightning clowns. I mean, it's just like, I, I just want something basic, you know? I just want something basic. You know, I'm not like the other girls, you know? I I just want my typical basic oscillarius, traditional Nemo clownfish, okay? And you know, I'm just, I just not like other girls, you know? And I mean, how else am I gonna show you guys that I'm, you know, a real one? Oscillarius clownfish are definitely some clownfish that I want to add. I want people who come over that aren't into the hobby to point out Nemo and get really excited. You know, I want to be that person and I feel like with all these like different variations of clownfish now, you know, like every color, like Holstein for my innovative marine 40 gallon, he looks like a cow. I feel like clownfish looks so different now. I feel like what's rare is truly having oscillarious clowns in your day. Cause I feel like everybody's neglected them. You know, everybody's neglected them. They have fancy clownfish that are black, white, brown. I mean, I want to bring it back to the basics. I want to bring it back to the basics. So yeah, definitely have Oscillarius Clownfish as my first additions to this bad boy. And then of course I need to add, you know, more timid fish as well. Uh, after, you know, the damsel family fish, I need to add, you know, timid fish. So what I was thinking in no particular order, cause I haven't actually figured out the order yet, but in no particular order, I do want to add a Royal Grandma. I mean, I guess this basic fish choices are going to be like a reoccurring theme because I haven't really had the opportunity to own these basic fish options. Okay, so don't judge me. 
Why am I justifying myself? I want the royal grandma because they are so beautiful. They're nice and colorful. They're like a bit shy. They're like a great addition. You know what I mean? They're just, they're a great addition, a tank staple. And I also definitely want a few groups of Antheas, of different kinds of Antheas, and one male and like two females of each kind in a group, if that makes sense. Because I've heard that if you have two females and one male, the male like becomes really like extravagant to show off to the females, you know? So I, I definitely want uh, some extravagant colorations in that male. So, you know, a few pairs of this male-female combo, right? But in terms of what kind of Antheas I really want to add, it's it's been like this ongoing process because, because when I look at the Antheas, it's like I look at them and I'm like, oh, I really think that that's a pretty Anthea. That's so gorgeous. I need to have that in my tank. And then I like look through various pictures and, you know, the website pictures of various vendors selling these fish and I'm like, oh, you know, maybe they're not as beautiful as I thought. You know, I keep, you know, I keep second guessing myself with Antheas. Maybe I'm just not a big fan of Antheas or, or maybe it's just because like every picture of a type of Anthea that I see looks like completely different and then it really confuses me about which one I want to commit to. So I'm constantly been going like on and off about which type of Anthea, you know, Antheas group I want to keep, but a few that I really keep coming back to are like Barlett Antheas. It's one of the fish that when I first wanted to have a saltwater tank and I was planning how I would put that tank together, initially I wanted a really large tank, so my fish stocking was a little bit different than what I actually ended up with, but that first initial fish stocking list that I came up with, Barlett Antheas was definitely on there, and I really want to pay homage to that uh, you know, newbie desire that I had for Barla Antheas, I guess. Anyway, I still think they're really gorgeous fish, so I've been thinking about those. Also, I really like the liar tail. Liar tail Antheas? Sorry if I'm butchering all of these names. I'm really, really not. I cannot emphasize how much I am not a fish person, but liar tail Antheas are really cool. I like both the male and female, you know, of those. Which, speaking of, has been one of the most confusing things to me in the concept of Antheas. Because most of the time, when looking at these Antheas, I really, really like the male, but then the females are so average, you know? And it's like, I can't commit to having two females that are like bleh for one, like, decent male. It's like this fish stocking list is honestly driving me crazy. I keep thinking that I have a really small tank and that I really have to be super, super, super careful with my fish stocking list. So I've been kind of driving myself crazy going back and forth, as you can tell. But um, with the liar tail Antheas, it's definitely one of those Antheas that I like both the male and female. So I'm thinking, just go with that. Just go with that and run with it. Maybe thinking about another group of Antheas, but I don't know. I'm so torn about this. I'm so torn about the Antheas. I mean, you could push and pull me any which way. Let me know what Antheas are like really pretty in the comments because I'm still I'm still having a difficult time picking them. So I also want to add a few wrasses. Uh, I want to add a few wrasses. I've been thinking about the fairy wrasse. I think the fairy wrasse is very beautiful and very colorful. I mean, why not? Um, I also really like the blue star leopard wrasse, but it's like another one of those wrasses that kind of looks different under the lining you have. And it's like, uh, I mean, I like you, but I also don't like you. You, I, I don't know. I mean, these these are the wrasses I have been, you know, in conflict with. However, there is one wrasse that I must have. Okay, it's my favorite wrasse of all time, the blue striped hammerin wrasse. Okay, this fish, I know I said I was going the whole basic route in terms of fish stocking, but this is gonna be my rare beauty because this is like my favorite fish ever. I mean, the blue and the yellow, they're just so striking and so pretty. I wanna add one to my tank so bad. But I think knowing how sensitive it will be in the quarantine process, I mean, it's kind of scary, but totally worth it because this is like definitely my dream fish. And it's going to be that fish that's really just gonna change my life. I mean, I, I need to have at least one or two like really bougie fish to counteract <laughs> my other basic choices, right? So definitely want that blue striped tamarind. I mean, just goals, total goals in terms of fish. Other fishies, other fishies. Okay, we definitely have to have our bottom dwelling gobies of some sort. I was thinking about two 
Yasha gobies. Cause they're just so, so cute with their little top in and everything. I mean, I really, really like them. And you'll of course pair them with that candy cane pistol shrimp. I mean, I think it'll be so cute to have those guys in my tank, but I've heard they're a bit sensitive. So I'm definitely gonna add those a bit later into the tank. Um, another one that I really need to add is actually not based on my choice. Well, I mean, I like this fish, don't get me wrong, but it's really based on Reef Mama. I need to add a blue dragonette, okay? A blue dragonet is Reef Mama's hands down favorite fish in this world. Haven't been able to own one up to this point. And she said, look, if you're setting up this tank, it is absolutely mandatory that you add a blue mandarin. So I said, yes, ma'am. And uh, I mean, I like mandarins. I've always wanted one too. I think they are so cute and they have a lot of personality. So uh, that's definitely obviously one that I have to add long time down the road because we want this guy a bit more established. You know what I mean? Before or you can think about adding adding in that guy, but that's another one that I'm pretty excited about. Another bougie fish addition that I, I've been thinking about is a candy basslet because they are just so bright and obnoxious and gorgeous. I think that's gonna be like my second bougie, bougie fish. They're just so pretty. I mean, in terms of the bigger fish, copper band butterfly. Not because of their Aptasia eating abilities, but just because I think they are like the coolest looking fish ever. They're just beautiful and uh, I gotta have one, even if that means that I unfortunately cannot own a clam. You know how I feel very strongly about clams. To not have one in my tank because of a copper band butterfly was a really difficult decision, but it was a decision that I had to make nonetheless. Copper band butterflies are definitely super beautiful and totally underrated in my opinion. I think, you know, more tanks should be incorporating them and not just because of their Aptasia eating abilities. Okay, let's, you know, they're just beautiful fish in general. It's time that we acknowledge that more. I also want to add a one spot fox face. I've always just thought they're really interesting fish, but there's kind of like a funny reason why I'm like really dead set on owning one now. Okay, so like Reef Mama always sticks her hands in my tanks. It usually ends up causing trouble. So with my Bubble Aptasia takeover recently, bless her heart, she has been trying to help the situation when I am not around the tank, you know, sneakily. She wants to help. It ends up just making the situation a lot worse because she pops the, the bubble algae and she doesn't realize that that's that's like a no-no. I've kind of talked up the fox face, uh, the fox face's ability to, you know, sting you or I don't know what you call it, poison you or whatever. I've really talked it up. Uh, so she's definitely scared to put her hands in this tank, which is which is kind of like a funny way to solve all of these issues. Definitely got to get that fox face to scare off Reef Mama from messing with my tanks. <laughs> now the tangs, deciding on what tangs I wanted to add was the most difficult part of this fish stocking decision making because obviously you can't really go for that many tanks because of their aggressivity and their need for space and yada yada. So I was really, really torn. Gem tang is one that I must have under all circumstances because I need one for the clout. You know, I, I need one, uh, you know, cause they're they're the gem tanks. Then when it came to the other tang that I really wanted to add to my tank, it was so difficult. I really wanted a naso tang because of their awesome personality and they're really pretty. But then I was like, mm, maybe I should go with, uh, you know, the royal blue tang. I mean, that's just like a classic. But the more I got to thinking, the naso tang had too much yellow in it. Like it wouldn't, I really was looking for a fish with blue color because it, if you look at my whole stock list, that was the color that was kind of lacking. Uh, so it was either royal blue or, you know, powder blue. And the more I thought about it, I think just powder blues are so gorgeous. I mean, they are just, they're this special kind of pretty blue that is just, it's just very nice. So it was a tough decision, not even gonna lie, but I ended up picking the powder blue. You know, I'm excited for that. I think that's, that's definitely one of the, I think that's definitely the fish that I'm probably, or one of the fish that I'm the most excited about keeping. However, unfortunately, it's gonna be the very last fish due to its aggressive. So it's gonna be a while until I see that guy swimming around here, but really looking forward to that. In terms of everything else, I really wanna add a cleaner shrimp. Uh, I think cleaner shrimp are just cute and I love the way that they're in everything's business. Uh, you know, they're always just there, you know, messing with this and messing with that. I mean, um, I, I, a cleaner shrimp definitely adds some personality to the tank in addition to the candy, candy cane pistol shrimp for the gobies. But other inverts, I guess, that are really important to me is, you know, obviously I've been talking about this for a while, but the arrow crab. 
Arrow crabs are scary little guys. They're awful. Um, I really miss having them in my tank. They scare the crap out of me. They really frighten me, and I don't think I can ever touch one. But I think that's why I'm, you know, they're so appealing to add to my tank. I had one in the past, and I mean, I just loved it because it was so freaking scary. I mean, it's it's the ugliest little spider thing, you know. <laughs> I just think they're really, really cool. And I it's it's mandatory that I think about adding this uh, this guy to my tank. Will I be actually placing it in there myself? No way, no way. But you know, I think it will make an excellent creepy little addition. So that is a must. So yeah, those are all the fish that I am considering for this beast of a tank behind me. I'm not really committed to these, uh, these fish. I still have a lot of thinking to do about them, particularly in what order I'm actually gonna end up placing them. I mean, this fish stuff like is really overwhelming to me considering I've never kind of dealt with this whole side of reefing before. So I don't know if you have better ideas of what fish I should add or, you know, have any recommendations for me, definitely let me know in those comments. Uh, I know this video is kind of really, you know, boring, but <laughs> I really need y'all's uh, input on what I should add. Is this too much fish? Can I go for more too? I don't know. I don't know. Let's discuss. Again, with the first, second comments, I love this. I've truly made it as a YouTuber, huh? And you know what, Broke Reef Man? That method of placing Zoas works just as well. Splash, I'm truly honored that you thought my Zoa placement video resembled a blockbuster hit. I try. I try really, really hard, okay? And that's how it all starts, Anders. You add one Zoa, then maybe two or three after, and then before you know it, you've become an official Zoa collector, then marvels over the latest and greatest Zoas that only have a slight color variation that is pretty much unnoticeable to most people. But you, you have now developed a trained eye and you absolutely must add these Zoas to your collection because Zoas are life. You just, you just gotta accept your fate now. Yeah.